To draw your pumpkin, start with a big oval in the middle of your paper. Make it as big as you can from top to bottom. Then start drawing thin C shapes connected to each side of the oval. Each time it gets a little smaller and add it all the way out to make a really big pumpkin. When you're done with that, trace with Sharpie and erase to clean up your lines. Then you're gonna need a red marker, yellow marker, and orange marker. I'm going to start with the middle oval and color red around every edge. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because we are gonna end up blending all of our colors together in the next step. So color heavy right along the edge of every Sharpie line that you have. If you get out of the lines, no biggie, because we're going to end up cutting it out when we're done with this. After the red, switch to orange and go all around the border with it. So we're going with red, then orange. And what are we going to do next? You guessed it, we're going to get the yellow. Fill in the rest with the yellow, and it's okay if you go over the orange a little bit with the yellow. It'll just make it a little bit brighter. And here's the fun part. Dip your paintbrush in some water and go to town just painting your pumpkin with the water. And this is going to blend your red, orange, and yellow so that your pumpkin has color value. So the edges should be dark, the middle lighter, and the center bright yellow. So this is going to give your pumpkin more depth and add that color value from light to dark or dark to light, if you will. Do not over paint. If you do, then it's going to be all one solid color and you're not going to get the cool color value effect. Now we're going to let this dry when we're done. And then we will get to add all of our fun details to our jack-o-lantern. Now you need to get your scissors and cut your pumpkin out once it's dry. And then get your glue and add the glue evenly all on the back of the cutout pumpkin. Not too much, just enough so that it doesn't squish out the sides when you press it down. Then press it down firmly to your black paper. Then you're gonna get your white and black paper and you're gonna cut out eyes, a nose, a mouth, teeth. Make sure you add those pupils to those eyes. And then cut out different shades of green construction paper into grass pieces, different sizes and heights and shapes. And cut out a stem and you're gonna glue it all down with your grass. I want you to show a little overlapping on your pumpkin also. And now we are ready to paint like Vincent Van Gogh. This is his starry night and this is my starry night. So I'm going to show you now how we can paint our starry night with our silly pumpkin. The first thing I'm doing is sketching my moon. I am using a white color pencil so you can see really good from the camera, but you can use a regular pencil. You want to barely be able to see it because we are going to paint over it. And with some white paint, I am painting my moon very, very carefully. Do not press really hard on that paintbrush. You want your paintbrush to be loaded with paint and you are gently, softly brushing the paint onto your paper. Before you switch colors, make sure you wash that brush and dry it off. And now I'm painting my stars. They don't have to be perfect little stars. They are shining bright. So I'm doing kind of like little asterisks or X's and I'm paint spreading them out. And then I'm going to take the yellow paint and I am painting little dashed lines around the moon. And I'm going to paint little dash lines around each star before we go on to use any other paint color. This is going to give our stars and our moon the illusion that they are shining bright, just like in Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Be careful not to press hard 
and make sure that you don't stick your hand in the wet paint. I've done that a couple of times. So wash your brush, dry it off, and switch to your next color. I decided to go with white. And my little dash lines are showing how the wind is blowing. So create some swirls and some movement with your lines. That's the whole point of doing this. You have so much movement in the sky when you do this. So each dashed line is going somewhere. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you get it throughout the whole sky, a little bit of each color, and at least two layers of the dash lines at a time. And I'm pretty pleased with the amount of white I have on my background. So now I'm switching to my light blue. I like to have a couple of different shades of blue. I think it really helps give our sky depth. And they are following the same lines as the white created. We want to create that movement. And then you might create, have some of them go in a different way, but you wanna keep your lines going in that swirly pattern. And then I am adding purple. And my last color I'll add is my dark blue, that midnight blue. And if you look at it, you can see how that sky is twinkling and how that wind is swirling. And here we have Van Gogh's Silly Jack-O-Lanterns. I hope you guys have just as much fun as I did making these.